All right. In this video, I want to talk about controlled opposition. And this is to make it so you win. You see, if you control the opposition, like let's say in a sport, let's just take the NFL, American football, and you run the whole thing, right? So you can control uh, the championship game, right? It's the Super Bowl. You control both teams. You can control the outcome and who's going to win. And ultimately, you win no matter what because you control both teams. I guess a better way to state that is like if you're an owner in the NFL and you own two teams, right? And then your teams that you own face each other. You get to decide who wins, right? Because you can tell the other team to lay back or the other team to push it a little more. Don't call this play, call that play, you know, do whatever it is to make sure that the team you want to win wins, right? And uh, another issue that comes up from this is that you can make yourself look good. You see, let's say in this, again, the same scenario, you own two football teams. You can pick your favorite sport. You like baseball, hockey, or whatever. You just pick, hey, you got two teams, right? And uh, let's say both the teams actually stink. And they don't really score a lot of points, and they don't really stop anybody from scoring points. And your two teams are going to face each other, so people are are basically joking, saying that the score is going to be 0-0, right? Well, since you control both teams, you can decide, hey, I want to make this team look good. So this other team basically lay down, and you're going to let the other team win. So it makes them look good, right? And this whole thing is controlled position. When you own, let's say, uh, the Democrats and the Republicans, you can make one look really evil so that the other one looks good, right? And then people will support the group you want them to support because you can make one do a lot of evil things, and the other one do good things, and then you're like, oh, I'm going to side with that side. The side's doing good, not the one that's doing evil, right? So you can really push the the flow of the country if you control both sides, right? I, I think I made the point pretty clear here of how if you control both sides, you can manipulate things like the whole good cop, bad cop routine. The good cop and the bad cop are on the same team, right? But one of them acts like just a rude law-breaking guy or gal to try to get you all worked up and like, I don't want to be around this guy. And the quote unquote good cop comes in is acting reasonable. So the contrast between the two, you would rather deal with the reasonable one. And so uh, the good cop being, you know, looking good, you'll talk to them so that you don't have to deal with the, the bad one, right? But ultimately, they're on the same team. So what I have here before you is Satan here. It is using the purple here. And I'm using purple and purple mouth here with the forked tongue. Because he has his red hand and he has his left hand. And the red, uh, the left, the right one is red, the left one is blue. You can take that to be red versus blue. You can take that to be Democrats versus Republicans. You can take that in a lot of different ways. But he's basically taking both groups that are in his hands and he's going to devour them. And in this case, we're going to talk about Christianity. And right here is true Christianity in the green here. 
And this is a group that are truly born again, walking by faith, not by sight, accepted God's condemnation of them to death and hell, and have accepted his sacrifice and peace offering through Jesus Christ so that they could die through Jesus Christ, accept that condemnation, and be born again with the risen Jesus Christ so that they can go through the way, the truth, and the life, and the only way unto the Father, and no longer be thieves and robbers trying to get to heaven some other way, building their Tower of Babel to get there. And over here, in the red hand, the right hand here, we have the RCC, which is the Roman Catholic Church. And they are obviously not Christian. They would persecute this group here uh, all throughout history. All throughout history, uh, which I think is funny, that Roman Catholics would say, oh, uh, what we teach is biblical. If you, you know, you know the Bible, you would be Roman Catholic. And then they, when they realize that you know the Bible, because they only said that because they didn't think you knew the Bible. Then they say, well, well, if you knew history, you become Roman Catholic. And they say that assuming you don't know history, because when you know the history, you know the history of Christian groups that existed outside of the Roman Catholic Church and that the Roman Catholic Church persecuted them. Like you have the Paulians, the Waldenses, the Abigenses. You get all these different groups that copied and preserved the scriptures all along while the Roman Catholic Church is sitting there claiming they're the one true church and actually forbidding you to have the scriptures in your own language. Right? <clears throat> but eventually, there became a Protestant Reformation where the, the Protestants, they came out of this church here and they were starting to leave and go this way. Where they... They weren't going over here to persecute. We'll put a P there. They were coming over here to join them. And this Christian group there started giving over their manuscripts, and they ended up taking all that, and they make the KGV. And the Roman Catholic Church hates it. And I, I always find it weird when Roman Catholics say, the King James is like wrong or something bad about it. You shouldn't use it. And I always I always ask them what's wrong with it, and they'll say something like false doctrine. And I, okay, what false doctrine is in the King James? They can't name anything, right? Then they'll say, oh, it's missing the 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 apocrypha. And be like, well, the King James. I even have a copy of it that has the apocrypha in it, right? So they got nothing other than they just don't like it, right? Because it's actually the scriptures, and when you have the scriptures, you can see that the Roman Catholic Church is full of it, right? So the Roman Catholic Church has to do something to catch these people that come out. And just like during the Great Schism, where a lot of Roman Catholics didn't want to be part of the whole, oh, the Pope is the, the Bishop of Bishops thing, over here on the, the blue here was also the Orthodox. And this was just a net here to catch those leaving to keep them from becoming actual Christians. And of course, my mouse stuck. That's unfortunate. Sometimes it does that to me. Uh, so just bear with me a second here. So they kept them from going over there by ha having the Orthodox being that net to catch those that would break off. But they're still not Christian because they don't even know the gospel and believe it. And then you have other groups in here. Like there's a lot of Protestants. We'll just put, oh, that was a weird, my mouse jumped up there. We'll just put Prots here for uh, the different Protestants that are basically just part of the counter-reformation to keep People from actually, again, becoming Christian. They don't want them to go here, so they redirect them. Right? They 
we try to take this, grab a hold of them here, loop around, bring them over to this here. You may be wondering why I have Kelvinists at the top here. Well, because Kelvinism is just a mini Roman Catholic Church, where Kelvin is the Pope and you disagree with them, they burn you alive just like the Roman Catholics would do, right? And they will actually preach the gospel. And that's why I wanted to show like these polar opposites here, where the Roman Catholic Church will completely reject the gospel. As in, Jesus died for your sins, was buried and rose again the third day for your justification, and you're saved by putting your complete faith in that. You're saved because you're clothed with Jesus' perfect, righteous, eternal life that covers your imperfect, mortal life. Right? They reject that. You need to have works. You need to not sin and do the religious rituals and all this stuff. And when you see that that's just their enslavement to get you running on a treadmill trying to get saved, uh, but you never go anywhere, right? You're just stuck doing that same thing forever. Uh, well, for the rest of your life anyway, until you die. And then you realize you were wasting your time. And on the other side, with Calvinism and their subgroups, you know, like the Puritans and Presbyterians, you got the five point Calvinists and then the four, three, two, and one point Calvinists. Um, <clears throat> so you got their different like subgroups there. And uh, they will preach the gospel, but you see, they don't really actually truly believe. They, you see, it's a head knowledge. Well, they'll preach the gospel. They'll say, Jesus Christ died for your sins. He was buried and rose again the third day for your justification. Your faith in this is what saves you. Except they don't truly believe because they say you, you can't actually choose it. God makes you choose it. And you don't even know if you truly chose it because if you don't persevere till the end, such as the end of your life, then you were never really chosen in the first place. So no Calvinist is really sure that they are chosen to be saved by the gospel because they might not persevere to the end, which would show that they were never really truly chosen in the first place. So they would just deceive their whole life, right? So they're not actually teaching faith in the gospel. They're teaching the gospel, but they're teaching you not to actually believe it. So you can see how this is the counter-reformation. And this is just another hand to catch all the people that were jumping out of the right hand. They catch you in the left hand. And even vice versa. There's a lot of people who are in this other group here, and they can see some of the, the nonsense here. So when they start to uh, jump out of here, and they're going to start to become actual Christian, right? They're the J here, they're going to join them. They're not coming over here to prosecute, but they're coming to join them. Well, they do the same thing here. Oh, they tried to shift you over here. Well, this same group that tried to bring you, the Catholics that were leaving over to that side, they grab a hold and they try to fling you back over and they try to fling them into this group. So anybody who leaves the red, they try to get to the blue. Anybody who leaves the blue, tries to, they try to get them to the red. It's the same thing. When you, you talk to these people, where a lot of times I'll talk to Roman Catholics, and a lot of times they'll say, you're Calvinist. But just because I might have something that I said that is similar to Calvinism, right? And then when you talk to Calvinists, and you don't believe them about free will, they'll say, oh, you're on the side of the Roman Catholic. You're, you know, you're with the Catholics. Do you believe you've got free will to choose to be saved or not? So that makes you Catholic, right? So it's the same thing when you're talking to the Republicans and the Democrats, right? Where I'm not a Republican, I'm not a Democrat. I don't agree with both sides because I see that they are two hands on the same man, right? And when you talk to a Republican and you don't agree with them, they just start talking to you as if you're a Democrat and they start going on about Democratic stuff on that side. And you're like, I don't care. I don't support that. You can bash that all you want. Matter of fact, a lot of the stuff you're saying, if not all of it, I agree with. Right? So that has no effect on me. I'm not saying to vote for the left when I say don't vote for the right. And then vice versa. You start saying that 
the things about the Democrats, and they just all of a sudden will start talking about things about the right and Republicans. And you're like, but I'm not a Republican. Well, if you're not on my side, you're on their side. And it's like, no. That's not how it works. I'm straight up telling you, I'm not for either side. Right? But you talk to me as if I'm on the opposite side of, of the fence that you're on. Really, that's not the case. It's a completely open field over here. And you, you're talking to me as if I'm on that other side of the fence. It's just these people, they're, they're blind and they're brainwashed. Right? But I just wanted to quickly go over this to show uh, how this is done with uh, most of so-called Christianity is actually in the hands of Satan. And he's gathering them up and uh, to devour them. Right? Because he's like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. And he's trying to catch all these people. Whenever they're falling out and they're going to join. Let's change the color here. They're going to join over here to Christianity. They're going to jump in. He tries to swoop them and redirect them. Right? He doesn't want them to go there. Because once you're Christian, you've been born again, sealed with the Holy Spirit of God, made one spirit with the Lord. You're saved, and you're no longer worried about these systems here, these churches. Like These people are always concerned, what church denomination are you part of? I'm Roman Catholic. I'm Orthodox. I'm Calvinist. I'm Baptist. I'm Seventh-day Adventist. I'm this. I'm that, right? And when you say, I'm not part of one of those 501c3 or c4 organizations, they're just like, oh, so you're not even a real Christian, <laughs> right? But they have it completely ass backwards, where they're the ones that they created these organizations and they say, we're the church, right? And it's just a declaration by man. But man doesn't decide who is and who isn't the church. The Roman Catholics don't decide who is and isn't the church. The Calvinists, Orthodox, and other Protestants don't. God does. And just like in Jesus' day with Israel, where they were, oh, they get to decide what is right and wrong, what's truth and what's not, and who's really the people of God and who's not. God's like, nope, I've got this remnant over here. You're not my people. There's a remnant over here. A small group of people is. And I think that's what a lot of people need to do is really focus on pleasing God instead of getting your acceptance from man. Like there's a lot of people you can tell that they don't have faith because they need reassurance to have some man or group of men to tell them, you're part of the true church, right? And they, if uh, the church isn't big enough, they have to go to a bigger one, right? That's why uh, a lot of them, they'll end up going to Roman Catholicism because they don't feel secure and they need oh well this church is bigger look how big it is this has to be god's church you know god would have the biggest and fanciest church it has to be the roman catholic church so they're they're like okay i'm finally here hmm. but they're not christian at all they're not part of the actual true church the true church is actually invisible it's not some 501c3 organization it's not some state religion it's not uh, an organization where you're all written there on a ledger. It's when your name is written up in heaven. I, I like to bring this up to both groups here, and I'll end it with this, is, okay, the people who believe the gospel over in China, and they're Christian, but they get persecuted and put in prison and what have you for being Christian and preaching Christian stuff, but they're not part of any denomination, right? They're not baptized into any church because uh, let's say they get converted while in prison. They're part of the church, right? But they're not water baptized. They're not on some ledger of the Baptists or the Catholics or the Calvinists or anything. They, they, they didn't do any kind of confirmation. They didn't partake of the communion or Eucharist. They 
None of that. But they're part of the church. Because they don't have to do any of that stuff to be part of God's church. That's to be part of man's church. It's something you should think about. Same thing in the Muslim countries. Those people who convert, like you hear about these people who are having dreams of Jesus and they convert him. Well, they're not Roman Catholic, they're not Baptists, they're not Orthodox, they're not Calvinists or Methodists or Seventh-day Adventists or any of that. Are they not part of the church? I think God already, already made that decision. It's not up to you. So thanks for watching and take care.